Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about zip and other file compression formats. This will include a bit of history as well as discussing the software required to create and access different formats of compressed file in different operating systems. So let's go and get started. File compression reduces the size of a file to create a smaller version that uses less space. Often the compressed file is in an archive format which means it can include multiple files. File compression methods can be lossy or non-lossy. In lossy compression, such as the process used to make JPEG image files, some data is discarded. However, this video is about non-lossy file compression, which maintains all data by identifying repeated data patterns and replacing them with codes that take up less space. File compression methods have been in development since the 1940s. For example, in 1952, David A. Huffman published a paper called A Method for the Construction of Minimum Redundancy Codes. This described a technique now known as Huffman coding which uses fewer bits of data to encode information patterns that occur more frequently. In 1977 and 1978, Abraham Lempel and Jacob Ziv also published seminal papers that defined lossless compression methods called LZ77 and LZ78. These are known as dictionary or substitution coders as they replace repeated data patterns with a reference to an entry in a dictionary that is created during the compression process. And like Huffman coding, LZ77 and LZ78 still form the basis of many of today's data compression standards. Talking of which, in 1986, Phil Katz founded a company called PKWare to create data compression software. In 1989, PKWare introduced a lossless file compression format called ZIP, along with a DOS program called PKZIP to compress and decompress ZIP files. PKWare also released the ZIP file format into the public domain, so enabling its widespread use. ZIP is an archiving format that permits the use of a number of compression algorithms, the most common of which is deflate, which uses a combination of LZ77 and Huffman coding. In the 1990s, PKZIP became available for Windows. And, as we can see, from the early days it allowed ZIP files to be password protected. And indeed still today, if you want to email or otherwise transfer some files with an added level of security, a decent option is to create a password protected ZIP file. Since Windows ME, Windows has natively included the option to create a ZIP file. It is, however, worth noting that if you want to create a password protected ZIP file in Windows, you'll need to use commercial software such as PKZIP or WinZIP or a free open source application such as 7-Zip. And we'll compare these and other file compression programs later in the video. Meanwhile, since Windows ME, the functionality to access non-password protected ZIP files has been built in to all versions of Windows. Beyond Windows, ZIP compression and decompression is included in iOS, macOS, Linux and FreeBSD. For example, in a modern Linux distro, to create a ZIP file, we just select Content and right-click, followed by Compress. Exactly what options are available will then depend on the distro. But here, in Zorin OS 17, we can create a standard or password-protected ZIP file, or alternatively, a tarxz or 7z file. And this leads us to the subject of other file compression formats. Alongside ZIP, many other file compression formats are in common use. Detailing all of these would make this video very long indeed. So let's run through some of the most common before summarising which applications can create and access them and comparing compression efficiency. 
in 1992, Jean-Luc Gailly and Mark Adler released the GZIP format and software for the GNU project. GZIP files have a GZ extension and use the deflate compression algorithm commonly used in ZIP. However, unlike ZIP, GZIP is not an archiving format, so can only compress a single file. In 1993, Eugene Rochelle created the Rochelle Archive Format, or RAR. While this remains proprietary, the license allows anybody to create software capable of decompressing RAR, so lots of file compression packages can read RAR files. However, RAR files can only be compressed using commercial applications such as WinRAR from RAR Lab. Back in the public domain, in 1999, Igor Pavlov released a free file compression application called 7-Zip, which has a native archiving compression format called 7-Z. 7-Z can use a number of different compression algorithms, including LZMA and LZMA2. LZMA stands for the Lempel ziv Markov chain algorithm, is based on a variant of LZ77, and was also created by Igor Pavlov. LZMA2 compression is faster than LZMA as it makes better use of multiple processor cores. LZMA also has its own non-archiving file compression format with the extension LZMA. A free set of command line tools called XZutils, previously called LZMA utils, can create LZMA files. XZutils also has its own XZ native format, which is non-archiving and uses LZMA compression. BZIP2 is another open source file compression utility. It has the native format BZ2 and uses a compression algorithm called Burroughs Wheeler Transform or BWT. Next on our non-exhaustive list, we come to compressed TAR files. In 1979, the TAR, or Tape Archive Format, was developed by the AT&T Bell Labs. As this suggests, TAR was created to package files together for storage on tape, and is not a file compression format. However, TAR files are often compressed using a variety of methods. For example, GZIP can be used to create compressed TAR files with a TGZ or TAR TGZ extension and tar-xz and tar-b2z files are also common. Finally, it's worth noting that in 2008, the WinZip file compression program introduced a new version of the zip format called zipx. This stands for zip extended and creates smaller files by using xz compression. So, which file compression format should you use? Well, the two key factors to consider are how your files will be compressed and decompressed, and how efficient the compression will be. Not that many years ago, it was also worth considering the time and computing resources required to compress and decompress data. But with modern hardware, this is unlikely to be a significant concern or constraint for most users. As we've noted, all mainstream operating systems can create and access zip files. In general, Windows has the weakest native support for other formats, although in October 2023, Microsoft issued an optional update for Windows 11 22H that added the ability to access many more compression formats, including 7Z, GZ, RAR, TARTX, and TARB2Z, providing that the files are not password protected. However, if you want to create compressed files in Windows in a format other than zip, or if you want to create password protected zip files, additional software is needed. So let's look at the capabilities of those applications mentioned earlier. Firstly, we have PKZip, which can be used to create zip files and is commercial software with a free trial. For desktop users, the program is available for Windows and Linux, and like all popular file compression applications, as we can see here, 
it can decompress a lot of other file formats in addition to its own zip files. Moving on, WinZip is a commercial Windows application with a 21-day free trial. The package can create zip and zipx files, whilst being able to access most other compressed file formats. Next is 7-Zip, which is a free, open-source application for Windows, Linux and Mac. The package can create zip as well as its own 7-Z format files, as well as being able to access loads of other compressed file formats. And for most users, 7-Zip is my recommended file compression application. Moving on, we come to WinRAR for a Windows PC, which is also available under the name RAR for macOS, Linux, FreeBSD and Android. This is again a commercial application with a free trial, but it's far less intrusive when you install it than, for example, WinZip. The package can compress RAR and ZIP files, as well as being able to open many other formats, as we can see here in its settings screen. And personally, if I was going to purchase a file compression application, it would be WinRAR. Lastly, we get to GZIP, XZUtils and BZIP2, all of which are command line utilities and all of which are pre-installed in most Linux distros. Here, for example, we're working with GZIP in a terminal where if I press enter, we will compress the final typeset file for my book, Digital Genesis. And there we are, it's done. And if we do a list like that, we can see the uh, original file at the top and the compressed GZ file beneath that. Similarly, we could also compress the file using XZUtils like this, very similar syntax. Just change GZIP there to uh, XZ like that. Takes a little bit longer, but uh, it will complete. There we go. Or we could compress using a BZIP2, pretty much the same again. There we are, and if we again do a list like that, we can see all three compressed files, with the XZ compressed file being the smallest and the GZ file the largest. And this brings us to the subject of file compression efficiency using different file compression formats. Greetings, here we are back in Zorin OS, where I've been using the functionality in the file manager to create compressed files of this sample content, which is about 90 megabytes in size. And I've already created 7z and tar xz files, so let's now create a zip file. Just a right click and then compress. Zip is our default here. I'll just change the name. There we go. And there we are, we now have a zip file. So if we just close that down like that, we can see we've now got three compressed files. And earlier, I used WinRAR to create a RAR file of the same content. So let's just paste that in as well. There it is. And so now we have four compressed files. There they are of the same content. And as we can see, the zip file is the largest, followed by the RAR file and the tar XZ file, with the 7Z file being the most efficiently compressed. Now, it's extremely important to note that different formats and algorithms work best on different types of content, and that some formats can use different compression algorithms. So our results here are very much just indicative based on one set of content and compression settings. However, they hopefully provide an illustration of the relative efficiency of four of the most common file compression formats. Today, drive capacities and online transfer speeds have never been greater, and therefore our need to use compressed file formats is not as critical as it once was. This said, compressed archiving formats like ZIP or 7Z or RAR remain important not just to save space, but also to allow us to bring together lots of files in one container that can potentially be password protected. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. 
and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,